Hi and welcome back. It's Vicky here with a fun project today. I will be creating a, a very realistic succulent. I did post a photo of uh, the succulent I created a few days ago on my social media and everyone was asking for a video, so here we go. First of all, I created this by using a C6 tie. Now C6 has two divisions, one in the UK and another one in the US. And some of the designs are not available in both continents. But they both have dies that are very similar in design and I will make sure to post down below in the description area the die that I used as well as more dies by Sizzix that are very similar in design. So you can choose whichever you like. Here is the tie that I used to create my little uh, succulent. It uh, cuts out four different shapes that uh, you need to have quite enough of those if you want your succulent to be quite full. So I have uh, two pieces of uh, cardstock here and I'm going to run it through my Big Shot machine and uh, I ended up having two of each shape and you will see that all those shapes are little uh, clovers, they look like clovers and um, they are uh, different in size. And I repeated the same process two more times until I had six from each shape. Now I'm going to use my blending tool and I'm going to ink up all the edges from all those shapes that I have. I am using Distress Oxide ink and that's seedless preserved. If you don't have Distress Oxides, you can use of course Distress ink or any other ink for that matter that looks similar to this color. Inking up these edges is going to give a really realistic look on the finished project. It might be a little bit time consuming, but it's uh, really worth the effort at the end. And with the magic of video editing, I have all my cutouts ready to go. Now I'm going to use a tool from the paper sculpting kit and I'm using the one with the two balls on each end. And I'm also going to use the um, squishy pad. I'm working at the back of my cutout where it's not inked and I'm going all around the edges with the small ball. This is going to break the fibers and it's uh, going to turn those edges a little bit curled so they don't stick so flat as they were when I cut them out. Once I do that with all the edges all around, I'm going to turn it on the other side and uh, press at the middle. And I'm going to repeat the same process for every one of those cutouts. Again, this is a little bit time consuming, but it does worth the effort at the end. After all, this is a succulent that I created to decorate my craft room. I have placed it on top of a small pot. It really looks adorable. And when you look at it from far away, you think it's a real succulent, but I'm not able to kill it. Now, the smaller you go, the faster it goes. So you can see how those small ones turn uh, dimensional super quickly. Turn them around and press at the middle. And um, you can use as many of those cutouts as you like for your succulents. You can make them as big as you want to and as fluffy as you want. Uh, you can really be very creative, use different colors of green, use um, aquas, and you can create many of them and even put them in a basket. They will look beautiful. Now I'm starting with the center of my plant. I'm going to take one of the smallest ones and cut out all the leaves. So I end up having three little ones, which I am going to fold at the center, like so. And then I'm going to add a dot of uh, hot glue and stick two of those leaves together. I am forming the center of my succulent now. I'm going to add one more dot on the third leaf and stick all three of those together. Now I'm going to move on to the rest of the small cutouts and I'm going to add a dot at the center and then stick inside the little thing that I have created in the beginning. And I will move on in the same manner, adding a dot at the center and then sticking the rest of it on top. Now make sure that every time you stick a new layer, you stick it a little bit offset so no uh, leaves are uh, one on top of another. This way it's going to look uh, more realistic and it's going to look fluffier and more full. Once I finished with all the small ones, I'm going to move on to the second size, again doing the exact same thing 
and every time I stick a new cut out, I always offset the petals. It's pretty easy and once you make one, you, you will find that it is addictive, you will want to make lots and lots of them. And again, you can add as many leaves from each size as you like. It doesn't have to be so many as the one I did. Every now and then you can use your fingers to manipulate all those leaves. And you can then continue to the next layers. You can also stop here without adding the next sizes, so you will end up with a small succulent, which is great if you want to create a little arrangement. In this case, to make it look interesting, make sure that you vary the colors of the papers as well as the sizes. So finally, I have moved to the larger size of the cutouts and I have found it easier to work backwards, as you can see, just because it was easier for me to see if I am offsetting the leaves. And again, use your fingers to manipulate the finished project. And your little plant is ready to display. It was lots of fun to create it and I know there are more of those succulents in my future. I hope I have inspired you today to create some fun paper flowers to decorate your craft room. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a lovely day.